Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Let's start with some macro thoughts. This caught my attention. Floyd Mayweather, Centra's CTR ICO starts in a few hours. Get yours before they sell out. I got mine. And uh, I thought to myself, this is tulip mania territory now. Bloomberg, this is a chart from Holger number of searches of news stories containing words Bitcoin and bubble um, uh, and I think that's interesting of itself and then uh, one final macro thought from triple leverage VIX doesn't have much room to drop according to the Bollinger Bands lower band sits 9.63 and this has been a sort of theme and a narrative theme hasn't it absolutely non-existent volatility, basically overwhelmed by a golden flood of liquidity. Home thoughts, I like this photograph of Nairobi by the mentalist, um, and uh, he captures Nairobi well there. And then I obviously read this very s sad story, the breaking death toll and powerful Mexico quake surges to 224. Um, and uh, it's quite interesting, isn't it? There have been a number of uh, earthquakes in different parts of the world. Japan, if I'm not mistaken, New Zealand, or was it? But at least three different places. And that took me back, uh, Mexico, to a book written by Malcolm Lowry called Under the Volcano. I struggled with it, to be honest, because it's about inebriation, amongst other things. Uh, that time I was a good boy, didn't get any created. They were the cars at the fair that were whirling around her. No, they were the planets while the sun stood burning and spinning and guttering in the center. Here they came again Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. But they were not planets, for it was not the merry go round at all. But Ferris wheel. They were constellations in the hub of which, like a great cold eye, burned Polaris, and round and round it here they went. Cassiopeia, Cepheus, the Lynx, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and the, and the Dragon, yet there were not constellations, but somehow myriads of beautiful butterflies. She was sailing into Acapulco Harbour through a hurricane of beautiful butterflies zigzagging overhead and endlessly vanishing astern over the sea. The sea rough and pure, the long dawn rollers advancing, rising and crashing down to glide in colourless ellipses over the sand, sinking, sinking. Someone was calling her name far away and she remembered they were in a dark wood. She heard the wind and the rain rushing through the forest and saw the tremors of lightning shuddering through the heavens and the horse, great God, the horse. And would this scene repeat itself endlessly and forever, the horse rearing, poised over her, petrified in midair? A statue. Somebody was sitting on the statue. It was Yvonne Griffiton. No, it was the statue of Huerta, the drunkard, the murderer. It was the consul. Or it was a mechanical horse on the merry-go-round, the carousel. But the carousel had stopped, and she was in a ravine down which a million horses were thundering towards her, and she must escape through the friendly forest to their house, their little home. See Malcolm Lowry under the volcano. The little one is off to the Gari Dari forest, which is a lush indigenous forest at the foothills of Mount Kenya. Azure pools glisten at the bottom of waterfalls, and 200 year old trees stretch into the canopy, supporting a rich variety of bird and animal life. The forest is a vital corridor that links the Lower Wildlife Conservancy to Mount Kenya and one which elephants have been using for centuries. In the 1980s, farmland became more developed on the southern side of the forest and farmers came into regular clashes with elephants.
violence in an attempt to alleviate fatal human-wildlife conflict, the forest was fenced off from southern farmland in 1992. Um, and uh, it really is an extraordinary place. And let me show you some photographs. This is of the waterfall um, when we were visiting Sirikoi Lodge, which is in the Lewa Conservancy, and gone for a visit to the forest. Um, it, it 4,500 meters long and 30 meters high, there is a walkway. It's an ideal place to watch what's happening below you. And uh, plenty is happening. And the last time we visited, the guide said to me, look down there, it was as if there had been a battle royale. And he said to me, the elephants were very unhappy. Um, one of them had died. And, uh, they'd expressed their unhappiness by destroying that habitat he was showing me. Um, I like this photograph, Hike Ngare Dare Forest Gateway, and uh, I am a little concerned because when we visited uh, the first time, this bull elephant, whose photograph you'll see here, blocked our way in the forest, literally about 30 feet away from the front of the car. The uh, guard who was accompanying us cocked his uh, 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 gun. Unfortunately, the elephant turned around. And then a photograph of Leila when she was much younger and I swimming in the Gare Dare forest in these azure pools that were described. Political reflections, the Supreme Court ruling is being awaited. Well, it's not being awaited anymore. Um, uh, I was listening to it uh, just now. Um, and uh, it's obviously going to be a lengthy ruling. The issue for me is really around um, the, the election that's got to be held. Um, the credibility of the IEBC now is seriously in question. Is it permanently and fatally wounded with this ruling is the question. Going back to Unga, where plenty happened, President Trump uh, made, uh, debuted his war doctrine on the world stage. Um, on Tuesday, Trump made his debut on the world stage on the same elegant marble, green marble dice donated by Italy after the Second World War that he had mocked in the 2012 tweet as ugly. The 12-inch square marble tiles behind the speaker at the UN always bothered me, he wrote. I will replace it with beautiful large marble slabs if they ask me. Um, he said, major portions of the world are in conflict and some, in fact, are going to hell. He vowed to totally destroy North Korea if it didn't abandon its nuclear weapons. He came close to calling for regime change in reckless Iran. It delivered a few campaign-style zingers like his pledge to crush the loser terrorists. About North Korea's Kim Jong-un, he pronounced Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Uh, one of Trump's most curious and convoluted themes in an, increasing, in an increasingly interconnected and globalizing world was the need for greater sovereignty. The nation state remains the best vehicle for elevating the human condition, he said. The subtext was that walls along every nation's borders were the keys to prosperity and international security. Trump's fiery UN address redefines US role in the world, said AFP. It was described by one observer as a 42-minute tweet storm and by another as President George W. Bush's access of evil speech on steroids. Uh, top Trump advisors have built the address as deeply philosophical, setting out an intellectual framework for the president's long-held world of view. He comes across as a man with no plans, said Thomas Wright of the Brookings Institution. It will be seen as weak and directional, directionless and full of bluster. My father, who's 82, was pretty impressed with it, so that threw me a little bit, I must say. Um, I, tend to, I tend to think it was, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to hear uh, Trump espouse this whole thing about sovereignty, non-interference, seems to be the way he's going. With respect to uh, North Korea, um, uh, my piece, A Screaming Came Across the Sky, was written this weekend, 
four F-35 jets, two bombers are seen here flying near North Korea. Trump says if the UN is threatened, we'll have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. And uh, at about the same time, he, he said that, look at this photograph, um, uh, AP, Kelly had his hand on his face after Trump called North Korea a band of criminals. Uh, the North Korean ambassador walked out of the UN Assembly in boycott of Trump's speech. Um, and uh, this is all about the rocket man um, and his mysterious device, the Schwarzgerät, uh, which is going to be installed in a rocket with the serial number 00000. Um, and that goes to Thomas Pynchon. It is a curve. Each of them feels unmistakably it is the parabola. They must have guessed once or twice, guessed and refused to believe that everything always collectively had been moving toward that purified shape latent in the sky, that shape of no surprise, no second chance, no return. I said one of the strategies of pro-regime, of the pre-regime change moment has been to demonize the other leader. And front and center, Kim's mind, must be the image of Saddam Hussein being hung by his neck on the occasion of Eid al-Adha. Mahama Gaddafi meeting his death after having been sodomized with a bottle. When you view things from Kim the Rocket Man's perspective, you might appreciate that far from being illogical, he is in fact ruthlessly logical. And he is speaking the language his adversaries understand lucidly. 10 million folks in Seoul, just 60 kilometers from the border, 28,500 US soldiers are all in the line of fire. Um, and I said, it's unlikely that the West has anything to offer the Chinese that can compensate them for the loss of their hinterland, their buffer, and their instrument of attack. And this is something the New York is writing about, why China won't pressure North Korea as much as Trump wants. At the center of the North Korea nuclear crisis is a pivotal question. How much is China really willing to pressure and punish its longtime ally in Pyongyang? Recent conversations in Beijing and Washington suggest that Chinese leaders have decided to increase pressure substantially, but are not, and probably never will be, willing to help Trump strangle North Korea into submission. China doesn't trust Kim Jong-un, but it trusts Trump even less. The reasons are what I was saying. China sees demanding strong hands to maintain stability ahead of Congress. Stability is an absolute principle that needs to be dealt with using strong hands. China Rising was a piece I wrote at the end of August. Netanyahu met with Sisi, but apparently has met him twice before in secret. Uh, Julie Bishop of Australia is seen here in a photograph of President and First Lady Trump. Aung San Suu Kyi treats the Rohingya crisis as a mystery. We want to find out why this exodus has happened. This is the LA Times. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro dollar 120.07, dollar index 91.75, Japanese yen 111.28, uh, Swiss franc 0.9613, the pound 135.40, having surged earlier this morning to as high as 135.60. One, what, 136 nearly, all over the place at the moment. The Australian dollar is at 0 0.8050, India rupee 64.305, South Korean won 11.2810, the real 3.1346, Egyptian pound 17.6335, and the South African rand is at 13.31. Dollar index. I'll put up a three-month chart, it's still unable to find its footing. Euro dollar, 120.08, um, back above 120. Uh, let's see, the ECB tend to talk it down when we pop above 120. Gold, well, we should expect to move higher on gold, given the currency movements we're seeing, 13.15, the figure. A WTI crude oil, US oil, $50.46. Uh, doing some work. We got rejected at 50.82. The bears needed, like myself, needed to be rejected there uh, with some violence. 
Sub-Saharan Africa one-on-one -on -one meeting. This is a photograph of President Kagame meeting with Emmanuel Macron. And uh, I tweeted, I would take the long arms around President Kagame and President Macron getting on famously. Fear, confusion as Ugandan serial killer murders pile up. We keep finding bodies. It was once a month, then once every two or three weeks, then every week, said Rose Nakasinga, middle-aged farmer. We had to do something. In a gruesome spate of killings, the bodies of at least 20 women have been found dumped in two areas of Uganda's Wakiso district since May. Many of the mostly young victims were raped and strangled. Some had sticks shoved into their vaginas. Others had body parts sawn off. Women living in Nansano, suburb of the capital Kampala, and in Katabi, close to Ntebe, to the southwest, see similarities in the murders that have hit their neighborhoods and whisper of serial killers and dark rituals. McKinsey has closed its eyes in South Africa, says the Financial Times in a very damning article. It does not take a genius to recognize that corporate reputations are easily lost in South Africa under the dismal presidency of Jacob Zuma and should not be beyond the analytical powers of a global consulting firm such as KPMG or McKinsey. Neither firm was as crass as Bell Pottinger, the PR firm that went into administration after running a racially divisive campaign for the holding company of the Gupta family. KPMG audited many of the Gupta's companies and eight of its executives last week resigned as it admitted its errors of judgment. McKinsey took a juicy contract with Escom, a state utility that involved working with a consultancy linked to the family. The firm still maintains that it behaved correctly and is walking the tightrope of self-justification. I'm intrigued to see how long it will take to fall off. Um, and uh, it's saying that KPMG has conceded that it failed in that duty, although it took far too long to recognize the failure. It was auditor and advisor to Gupta companies for 15 years until the taint became too great last year. Um, and then McKinsey's mistake was shorter lived and less blatant, but it was wrong nonetheless. As one partner of a Johannesburg firm sees it, KPMG became part of the machinery, while McKinsey looked the other way for money. Indeed, it was a lot of money. Escom paid McKinsey $73 million for nine months' work, ending in July 2016. And at one point, the consultancy anticipated receiving a payment of up to $370 million over four years. McKinsey produced a restructuring plan for the inefficient utility, which was inflicting power cuts across South Africa. It was also due to work on implementing the plan and be paid a, sh a share of the financial gains. The firm insists that such contracts are common and the terms match similar deals, but rivals are astonished. One internal McKinsey document noted the risk of being criticized for exorbitant fees. Here's why South Africa's central bank may cut interest rates again. This is all about inflation, which is pointing lower. South African oil share is up 10.58% so far this year. Dollar rand, last time I looked, 13.31%. Nigerian all share up 29.66% so far this year. Ghana Stock Exchange up 36.32% so far this year. Look at this tweet. In many respects, South African Airways and Ethiopian Air are quite similar and can be compared. In other ways, as seen in the chart, they are very different. Look at the data. I like this postcards from Dar es Salaam shot on iPhone, the Bongolese. Kenya Supreme Court is giving its full judgment today um, as I speak. Uh, it seems pretty lengthy. Kenya police fired tear gas yesterday at Supreme Court protesters. This was quite interesting. These were government supporters protesting. Uh, Kemi Fijika this morning, as I was driving in and listening to BBC Newsday, asked the Law Society's Okero, is it fair to ask if we're in a constitutional crisis? We will be if one side boycotts the next election. Fake news in Kenya's election undermines the rule of law. This is international embassies. Kisby Green said the impact of the Tanzanian actions 
in Kenya was a positive contagion effect. As the mining ministry has requested the opportunity to inspect and has offered to assay each bar of bullion exported, it means our gold exports take a day longer, but I would rather that than that than have the government turn around and say we're stealing their gold. Kilma Peset in Kenya is gold plats only producing mine. The rest of its output is from extracting gold from mine waste in South Africa and Ghana. Uh, and this is exactly what I was writing about on the 11th of July when I spoke about how opportunity was knocking for Kenya's mining sector. And I said recent events in both Tanzania and South Africa's mining sectors are tipping both jurisdictions into an uninvestable and twilight zone. Kenya Shilling 103.30, central banks been saying they've been buying hard currency. Nairobi All Share rebounded 1.18% yesterday. It's up 22.95% year to date. NSE 20 was a little bit more lackluster, but up 0.11%. This is the official press release on our ongoing merger talks with Nakumat, that's from Tuskies. Now, as I've said before, there's a lot of debt that's got to go somewhere, and it's not clear to me where it's going. The law capping interest rates is unlikely to be reviewed until the second half of 2018, given the ongoing political standoff in the country. I agree with that prognosis. Big companies top bank loan defaulters list, according to Dr. Jirogi of the Central Bank. But the economy is definitely slowing down, I'm afraid. We're going to slow down a bit further, given what we're seeing happening in the political space. Once again, thank you for stopping by.